Welcome to Portland County Historical Society. My name is Tabitha Scoble. I'm the assistant director here. And I do have a few things to announce before we introduce our speaker, one of which is please silence your cell phones if you haven't done so already. They are disturbing when they go off. We also do have refreshments. If you haven't gotten any yet, go ahead and get some before you leave because there is quite a variety there and we don't need them here afterward. <coughs> also, if you haven't signed the book on your way in, please sign on your way out. We do keep track of where people come from and such. This is our last Lunch and Learn this year. We've had 18 so far this year and we're very thankful that Portland Rural Cemetery said yes because we think we have a lot to learn from them. We also have two other announcements. There are a couple of raffle items. We will draw for the one in the hallway at the end, the teddy bear. So if you want tickets, uh, go right out there and get tickets before everything is over. The other one we're going to draw on Saturday at our attic treasure sale. So Saturday, Friday and Saturday, 1 to 5, we will be having our attic treasure sale again to try to get one last, uh, one last hurrah for it. Without further ado, this is Jeff Briggs from the Cortland Rural Cemetery. Thank you very much for coming today, Jeff. Thank you, mm -hmm. folks. I appreciate it, too. Uh, uh, flatters me to have this many people here. Uh, uh, we love the fact that you're, we're invited also to promote our cemetery. Um, I feel it's one of the most beautiful and historical uh, pieces of property in Cortland. And uh, so we're, and we have our struggles in that, but we have a lot of good and pro things going. And, um, our presentation used to be a little bit more doom and gloom, but we're doing okay. Um, uh, but we'll have a little bit more history than the <laughs> normal presentation. So I don't bore you all that have seen my presentation before. Um, this is usually on our website. I will remind you, and I'll push this again. We have a really, really good website, www.cortland-ruralcemetery.com, and an excellent Facebook page. Uh, the, uh, the, um, our website, has incredible maps on it and listings and who's there and stuff and then some links. You're all set. Thank you. So basically, my agenda for today is going to give you. I'm going to give you a quick overview of our cemetery, our strategic direction. Some here lies, and we'll discuss some people, and uh, we might get some grave, gravestone symbolism and some Q and A and that. Uh, feel free if you have a question. Raise your hand. I'll try to answer anything you want too. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. You can go with my things. Again, established in 1853, and if you get a chance when we're done here or so, uh, there's a survey map signed September 1st, 1854, the first, I assume, map of Corlands Cemetery. That's all. That's very interesting. Thanks to the Hubbard family's efforts and with some random money, and, and also mm -hmm. so there's some famous, you know, there's some pretty neat, influential people from you know our, our history. Um, what a lot of people don't realize when they drive by the few hundred yards out front on Tompkins Street, we have 44 acres behind us, and as you can see, with a lot of things to uh, mow around and to maintain. <laughs> but we have an excellent crew. We have an excellent crew that, that does an excellent job with it, and I'm very proud, proud of them. Uh, we do have a Jewish section, temple section, that goes along here, along the college, over here. Uh, but we are, uh, and a vet, we have two couple vet sections, mm -hmm. actually, to our, our newer vet section, and then you have the, Gro the Grover, Grover section mm -hmm. from the Civil War up there. Um, we're not denominational, though. Now, what people don't realize, we're a nonprofit. 501c13, and I'll, and I'll tell you what that means because it adds a little bit more pressure. Governed by the Board of Trustees, which, shout out to Kathy Sincata for all you know, she'll be the new first woman president. It makes me a tear to sorry I'm not happy for. First woman president ever in Cornwall Center. They didn't like having a woman on the board <laughs> back, back in the day. So she, she's done very well, but she's, she's going to only help. And regulated by New York State. DOS, DOC, I won't touch that one. <laughs> um, but being a 501c3 makes us different from normal nonprofits. Most nonprofits, I call nonprofits, that just live out the donations. We actually do take in some revenues, which I'll explain. But that also limits us mm -hmm. on how we can spend our money uh, in our accounts, and I'll go into that. Thank you. 
the first design, and you can see, I love the circles and you can and, and this, and the, especially in the circles, and you can see where it started started up here and and, and these old parts. Mm -hmm. They try to make an asymmetric park setting. I love the circles, but they're rough they're rough to maintain. They're very tricky to maintain and that they're beautiful. That's why you're traditional, you'll see, which I I got this gonna add this are, are all perpendicular in that. It's basically for maintenance concerns too. But just strolling hills and paths, which it is, old farmland. Um, it's old farmland that was cleared out. And just a wonderful place where the court like the courthouses, all the churches down there were getting filled up and stuff, and it was in the court it was getting hustling and bustling, and people we were getting a lot of immigrants in that over. And then it just gave a place to come out. I mean, the cemetery really wasn't considered ghoulish or anything at that point. Uh, people used to come out for picnics and that, and just to enjoy, enjoy everything, too. Um, again, as I just said, in that case, um, it was modeled on your, your European and like, your, like um, uh, Boston, like Mount Auburn. Boston has a lot of very similarities, too. But that's all the European that the immigrants brought over from the old Euro European look. And that's where it adds. It adds to the beauty, but it's very tricky. And there's nothing flat either, which is very tricky. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Gibson Chapel, if you haven't seen it, we're always welcome to let you in. You, you, you enjoyed it. And um, it's gorgeous. We have some beautiful, uh, beautiful <laughs> buildings on our property. But George Connival. Who also, as you can see, did the did the Coral Democrat building, you know, the high school, high school, Central High School, and the county, well, it's now the county office building, too. Yes, and then he he's buried with us. He ended up George ended up becoming a major architect, and I, th I believe he designed the Metropolitan Library in Manhattan. And he might have, and, and I believe he might have even gone over to Paris, France, to help on a project that. But he came back to be buried with us. Now, is Carl Clark, I'm not, is Carl Clark with us, Mary, do you know? I think he's buried with us, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I think he might have just designed and stuff. Now, Carl Clark, he designed the Coral Free Library and that, but he did my office and the superintendent's house, which is my house now. Uh, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, just the woodwork, how they did, how they did stuff back then. He was pretty much, but, I believe he also, where the old bell tower was, he designed where the old building was, but that got replaced by the bell tower and that too. All that's left is, is like a rock, just what people tell me in that. So we are in the Tompkins Street Historic District, but we are but in National Register, but we don't get really affected by, by that. But we, we've taken care of our property, as you can see, especially like with our slate roofs and that, mm -hmm. um, we try to keep the tradition of you know, keeping these places, you know, to, to go along. We also have a little place on Sand Street, uh, also that we have, we have an employee that lives over there now. Um, so uh, that needs a little bit of work. That needs some work too. That was old. Um, the original house, talking about Sand Street, mm -hmm. there's a beautiful house. So that'd be probably 11 Sand Street, Shuley's house. 11 Sand Street was the original Super's house. And then they moved it around the corner to Sand Street. And the old access road going up where the access road mm -hmm. at Cortland State is now, mm -hmm. they moved some houses down there from down there to do that also. Just I'm a history guy. So thank you. Now this is what this is gonna shock you probably a little bit. <laughs> Operations. Myself, I have two full-time staff members. <laughs> 44 acres. And I have three seasonal workers during the summer. So you can imagine, we dig our own graves mm -hmm. and that. So we have our hands, we definitely have our hands full. Um, my, my revenues, unfortunately, are made on burials, lot, and niche sales. Niche is what we have there, the, what we have over in the chapel for cremation urns and that. Their, their, their containment uh, cabinet for that. They're actually very beautiful too. Um, uh, I make money on putting in foundations for people and, and veterans markers. Um, I don't know, wait, I didn't see that one. Mowing road maintenance, of course, <laughs> that's for sure. We really do, we have to address some road maintenance. It, that's the one thing we do apologize, but the cost is so astronomical now yeah. to redo our roads would be, because I don't even know how many miles of winding road would be even, even in there too. We, we got quoted once and you're talking like a million, million dollars. So I get those modest revenues from the operations. We've also been very generous from grants 
the McDonald Foundation has been awesome to us, the Wilkins Foundation, Cortland Community Foundation, uh, the Cortland Rural Cemetery Foundation, now Dissolve, they, they started enjoying the direction we were going to. But that's like, you know, that's like depending on some, that's not, you know, burden to hand. So, but we are fortunate and I think the more we keep on showing our ingenuity and, and, and keep on making the place look better, that's only going to help us for, for, for that. <coughs> and we also, up in the upper corner of the northwest corner, up by the college, we, we let them put the parking lot for the dining hall in there and so we get, we get a lease check twice a year from that. Um, there's a little asterisk on, 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 on that one uh, also. Um, now this is the one for a lot of people that confuse people, especially when they look at deeds and that. Permanent maintenance. <laughs> I have more people that come in and, and saying, you didn't, you know, the, I used to. The, the lawn's not mow. We pay for permanent maintenance. Our cemetery is always permanently maintained. <laughs> what permanent maintenance means, that's to protect the interest of the municipality that, we, that we're in, which is the city of Cortland. And, you're gonna, and this is what people are shocked. You're allowed a certain allotment by New York State, they take a certain percentage, it's usually 12% on plot sales. New York State demands this on plot sales. 12% right off the bat. But they abused some money back in the 80s, so we're still getting punished by the state. So we pay 25% on every plot that we sell. We have to put into the permanent maintenance fund, which we have, and everybody, you know, when we have to show, when we have to show what we're worth, it looks incredible. And all we do, all we get is the interest off of that. Right. That money has to go on just in case if we fold to the city of Coral. They don't want us. We're a municipality, they have enough, they have enough. And then, as I call it, the last fee, every person gets interred, cremation or full body, New York State. It's a, it's funny, I call it, it's a, it's a Department of Conservation law and like an interstate like disposal, $35 every interment. Every interment, so I always call that the last tax. <laughs> the last tax. So. But these are the things you don't know. But this is money we just cannot, we, 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 cannot, we, we cannot touch. So, you know, it might look like we're doing, we're doing okay also. We also have great donors. Uh, we have a no newsletter there. We, do, we have a really nice newsletter. And we have wonderful personal donors. We have an angel society, too, that we do acknowledge people who have given over $5,000. That signs in the in Gibson chat. Thank you. I love this. This this states it for me. I wish my mother <laughs> would jump on board with us. She would scold me probably right now for saying this. But I do not think a cemetery is doom and gloom and gloomy in that. A lot of people do. Uh, I don't know why they have that too. So shift from a single use facility for the deceased, death, make it a multi use facility mm -hmm. for the living. So that's why we started trails, our nature too. We go where we have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of friends come over from the waterworks to visit us, especially this time of year when the when the acorns are out. Um, genealogy, that's why they have me here. When they, plus, like I said, our websites and, and that too. History, we're promoting our history also. Um, gardens, we're starting the arboretum too. We're trying, but we have to get up to a number of trees. We're adding, but, we, but on our cemetery list, which I'll discuss here, we have a lot of marked trees that are very interesting mm -hmm. and rare oaks and, and, and that also. Art, we have the art council, and then we have art, we have had some art shows um, also. Music, we've had some uh, string concerts in that. People have had some fun having music in there. And then just general programming in that. So, and I'll tell you, that philosophy, it was that when I came in here. I said, this, this, this is, the office, everything. It was just, just the attitude there was a gloomy, was a gloomy place. So I'm glad this, this, this is coming about. It's like a little bit of elbow grease though too. Mm -hmm. But like for the signs, you know, I love this. And John Herschel, who also, he's mm -hmm. just, he just, he's been the president of the board and he's, and he's giving it up to Kathy tonight. Him and I usually do the presentations. He's been great having his mind there and his ingenuity has been awesome. And that's why I jumped on board with him. I was sexing at Virgil. And, and, and 
at first I was still I was, I was a little nervous because we try to keep we don't really try to glamorize and be tacky at our cemetery. We try to be totally respectful in that. But he had a great idea. And, and he had learned because uh, he was on the board of Lime Hollow. And they had signs, I guess, on the walking trail mm -hmm. and stuff. So as John thought of, cemetery trails. We have a really cool, we get a lot of visitors. And I have a map out inside of my office and there's pamphlets. 16 stops have historical facts of the people right there in front of you. And little odd facts and that. Mm -hmm. um, we had a uh, geology class, Tim Connors class from Cortland State came in and helped us with the geology um, part of that because it's part of monuments because he had a geology class we allowed to go in there. We're trying to get along better with the college and that which really helped with that too. But this is the day that uh, uh, Eric Bitterbaum came down because of the, with the college kids and John and I were doing the pre presentation and selling our place but I really was surprised how, how fascinating, especially during leaf peeping season and stuff, how many people I see go walking around. Plus, if you have bad knees or anything like that, it, they're at eye level and that, so I suggest grab a map and, and go, go check it out. Um, Operation Green Space, funded through uh, McDonald Foundation, has helped us to put more better section signs in there, fix our water stations. We have better equipment now. We have way better equipment. Well, that, that looks cool. We have a backhoe now. <laughs> that's what I mean. Oh, you have your own backhoe. Oh, we, yeah, we have a little bit different equipment now. So that's, yeah. Okay. I, so that, that's good. That's why I love having <laughs> Kathy there, too. Yeah. It's like pulling teeth. Thank you. Uh, uh, um, the, the, the Center for the Cultural uh, Arts was in my house at Gibson, <clears> but they, they, got, they were able to get over into the Performing Arts Center, so that worked out good for them, and it helped me out, too. Um, we had a really cool play in the fall under a tent out in front of the chapel with Bill Whiting's Tiafany Over River Anthology. That was a really cool performance underneath the light, you know, under the tent and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That was really cool. And then, um, then we had like, again, a string concert. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we had some acapulago. Yeah. That one has always got me into it. So that's, these are little things we're trying to keep in good taste but also showing off on what we have and, and just getting people to look around. Thank you. Um, we are, we, we got a couple of planning donations, but we also have programs. Uh, due to the weather, as you can understand, unfortunately right now, we're trying to build our arboretum, but we're taking them out about as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. We had a rough year with our big trees, and we have some very big, dangerous trees, too. Um, but as, again, as I said, a lot of them are labeled. Uh, yeah, Steve Broyles came up and, 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 and wrote it all down and we made plaques up. And that's, there's some really cool, beautiful, different type of trees, pin oaks, different, you know, different type of stuff. Um, we have to do a lot of preventive maintenance. We, we, have, we, have, enough, we have enough firewood, let's just say, for the, for the year or two. And I, with, it, with, it, with the insane cost of workman's comp and liability, it's, it's an injury concern. It, it's, it's so dangerous. I mean, you're talking, you're talking tonnage uh, above your head. So I have to worry about my guys who are driving mowers and weeding under these too. So, and that's why if anybody is around or anything in the cemetery and sees something that's imminent threat, please, please let, let one of us know because at 44 acres sometimes, usually we do a check on stuff but that just helps us out too. Oh, uh, it's okay. Yeah, we're going to be starting some other things too. We're, Jack was talking about with the garden. We might be putting one over in Sand Street too. Um, we're adding some more birding box. We're going to be putting some bluebird boxes in the duck pond. That's a little bit on hold right now in the conservatory. But we're but we're thinking. You know, and all, all all in good time. All in good time. So excellent. Yeah, I love this statement. <laughs> Point being, by bringing more life to the cemetery, we have a chance at extending the life of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So you were so you were saying. I think it's just cool. Mm -hmm. That's a John Herschel one. I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him credit on that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So here lies. I want to talk over a few people. And if there are any of you people, I brought again. I brought that map today. That I brought that over from the cemetery, so you, you can see a little bit. But I have a fascinating poster that's pertinent uh, to to my cemetery that came from my family. And actually, one of these gentlemen that played in this game is in my presentation, coincidentally. And, and uh, I just got my hand. So anybody who really wants to see some really cool Coralton history, check this out. But I'll explain and who, some of who, who those people are uh, in, in a little sec. All right. Thanks.
We have a governor. I don't know mm -hmm. if anybody knows that. Nathan. No, you're fine. No. Cortland Armour's normal school, good. went to study law, yeah. who he married to. He defeated Al Smith, but then Al came back and beat him. So, mm -hmm. two years. But he still was a governor. Still, still was a governor, too. That's why they didn't say he, he got him and died at the Hotel Pierre in New York City. Mm -hmm. He's got a really neat above ground mm -hmm. casket mausoleum up in the top of the sea, too. Mm -hmm. There's things. Ah, Theodore Wickwire. He played, in, he played in this baseball game. That's pretty neat. Now, him and his brother, as we all pretty much know who he is, they're in our Wickwire mausoleum up in C2. Mm -hmm. uh, they brought their farmer's work ethic to the village of Coral. And first repaired you know, bicycles, and then they painted the screen, you know, this, the, the, the wire screen. And that's what, from my history on this, what's so neat, that's right around the time that him and his brother were just kicking in. So they were doing pretty well at that point, but in the next 20 or so years, they prospered a little bit since then. And again, that's where they remember for their five impressive homes, tunnels and all that on Tompkins Street. But they were major contributors. Cortland Hospital, Cortland Free Library, Wick Pool, and other civic contributions. Mm -hmm. as, they, as, they, as we all know, you know, that name's pretty solid, but they're there and that mausoleum goes goes in the ground, probably about a story and a half down underground too. It's, wow. I, I, I I'm a spiritual I'm a spiritual per, mm -hmm. and this stuff doesn't bother me. I've seen stuff, mm -hmm. but that one place is the one that makes my hair raise up. That one just has a. <laughs> but it's interesting. I've been in with the family and gone over everybody too. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a young little boy. I don't know his name's Freddie or whatever. Mm -hmm. What was it? Was Raymond. it Raymond? Was it Raymond? Yes, and his statue will cut you in half. Oh, really? Oh. And no, you can't get a straight answer on how he died. I don't know. Have you? I don't Some know. people say he might have ran over. No, it's like a family mystery. Oh, so I that family's deep. Hmm. But just, you know, but his oh, statue in there is, 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 is it's, it's a life-size statue. Oh. Thank you. <clears throat> well, that's, that's the thing. You don't, like on our second station, our second station, and I have to go through the books, and it's amazing how they say hand graves, like the flu epidemics, the cholera epidemics. Mm -hmm. I have a family in my second cemetery station showing the sad part of the cemetery. This gets me almost teared up. They lost like nine kids in one week. Mm -hmm. they, lost, oh they lost on consecutive days two kids at once, I think, to the cholera. Mm -hmm. So just to show you know, how it was in the old days, and you see all their little stones, mm -hmm. stones there. So. Mm -hmm. This is a cool one, too. Otto was a, Otto could, was one of the greatest inventors ever, believe it or not. He almost beat out the Wright brothers, but he had so many other patents in that. I met, I had a, I had a gentleman just this summer, because this is one of my favorite stones. This is his airplane that he was trying to compete against. It's just Otto, buried up in the cemetery, as I'll explain. That's on his stone up there in section one, in section one. But again, he was an early aviator and stuff, but, but, but what he got huge with, he, he came over from Hungary, he was, he was an immigrant too, right in Church Street. Uh, his great, well, I had a gentleman come in this summer, he says, I just dropped my, I, at the beginning, that, well, yeah, yeah, it was for summer school. He said, I just dropped my daughter off. He goes, but I gotta say, my grandfather's buried here, and he's sort of famous, he said, but not really probably in a way that you think he's famous. He's one of the famous inventors. And I go, what's his name? I go, Otto Herman. I go, come on, let's. I knew instantly right where I was. Out of 19,000 of them, you know, that's pretty cool when you can pull that off, too. And he explained what a genius. He was a mad genius. He, he, he suffered extreme mania. Oh, yeah. So it, even though he designed, patented the rotary engine, which is pretty impressive. And then he opened up, and then a month after opening up the Coral Airport, we had just moved to factory, died at the Vernoy Sanitarium. He, he, he'd get one patent, make money on it, and then he'd dump all his money into this next wild hey, project. Oh, he was just nonstop, as he said. He, he was known as a mad scientist. That's how his mm -hmm. grandson, he said he was fascinating, but he, just, he was just a different bird, Neat. for mm -hmm. sure, too. Thank you. Mm. 54 years old. Mm -hmm. She's one of my favorites, Lydia. too, mm -hmm. Lydia. And that's funny because you won't see doctor with her. She wasn't allowed to be called doctor, even though she was. 
Um, she's on the she's on the wall when you go you know to this by the emergency room. She was an invalid, I guess really just sort of physically sickly, but think of all the people. She basically took care of all the people when everybody went to war. And there's an old story that her husband, yeah, yeah, she went to medical school. When he enlisted, supposedly, he didn't want to enlist and she walked him down. <laughs> she was a tough, she had like 12 kids or something, there's a bunch of them. She was a tough, she was a tough old coot. <laughs> but she practiced homeopathic medicine, you know, in, in her own court mm -hmm. streets. But she was a suffragette and wore the uniform of women's movements and bloomers. <laughs> she got arrested for performing abortions, though no records are found to support that car. But at the time, I don't know, you know, you just don't know what was going on. She had it. She had it. She had to take care of everybody pretty much at that point, from Marathon mm -hmm. or Free, Freetown all the way to Cortland, and that she took care of, took care of, and then had all those kids. And, and, and all that, so uh, she's quite an admirable woman. But the fact that, that John wrote that down, she wasn't allowed to, become, to call, be called a doctor. Hmm. That's why she was a homopathic you know, healer, whatever. She, women weren't allowed to have that distinction at that point. But we call her that, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, this poor guy, as we all know, we, we, have, the gray, we have our Grover vet section, mm -hmm. Civil War section too, mm -hmm. Captain Andrew Grover, commander of the New York 76. He, he, born, uh, he fought in the battles of Rappahannock Station, Warren and Springs, Gainesville, where he had half his leg blown off. Goes, goes in rehabs in Washington, D.C. He resigned, but then they, re, they reappointed him, majored the regiment, after his regiment returned to his duty, which unfortunately was Gettysburg, mm -hmm. where he was supposedly they say the first Union officer killed them. And supposedly, from what I've heard too, that he was in a mass grave down there and they went up and they had to disinter him and then they brought him up you know, oh. on, a, on a train oh, through the Philly like and they had to decorate you know, yeah, service for him. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Probably a con some Confederate soldier probably had to, you know, that's, that wasn't very friendly back then. Yeah, that was, could you, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't, but since he was an officer, they had to go find him, so. Mm -hmm. But he's with us. He's uh, our third set of trails. Uh, mm -hmm. sign. We have uh, this uniform. All these people, all these people yeah. actually are on our cemetery, yeah. cemetery oh, list. You do have, oh, you, that's right, you do. Museum. Yes, you do have, I forgot that. That's, 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 that's neat. Mm -hmm. See, that's why, that's why I like, enjoy this. Thank you. Now, wherever right you go in our cemetery, and our first cemetery is right there, a lot of you might know, mm -hmm. Dr. Sanders. Probably one of the wealthiest non-industrialists at the time. If you went to school back in the early 1900s for, for a while, you were reading, and it's in one of our old newsletters too, it's some neat stuff that you can pull up on the website too. We have a really good article. And you wrote that, didn't you? I gave you the book. You gave me the book and stuff like that. But yeah, you, it, thank you. Yeah, she started the ball rolling on that. But the world famous Sanders Readers and Spellers. Um, sold books all over. This is 13 million copies. That's more than Cat in the Hat. <laughs> the Exorcist. <laughs> that, that's just that's just amazing, isn't it, for the for the times too. Mm -hmm. So that so as you can see, um, they were doing they were he was doing pretty well at, at, mm -hmm. at, at the time. You just don't replace these as as the Wickwire goes Liam also too. But he's one of our fascinating, and he's on the first stop of our summit trail. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Reynolds. He's probably one of the most influential influential men. He's on the base at M, right near the, mm -hmm. just, you can see Hubbard over right over in there. Um, the Burgesses, Burgesses are in there also, just to the left. Um, he, as we all know, Brigadier General, 1812, legislature, <laughs> congressman. He, 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 he made things roll in Cortland too. Probably one of the most influ influential you know, people that, to, to begin Cortland. Cortland County, and he helped, you know, start the Cortland Rural Cemetery too. He had his hands in on a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, but it's amazing what they could accomplish too, back then. It just, but I guess if they didn't, they were going like this. So, yeah. Um, it's admirable that these men. Thank gosh that we have people like this too. He's in a modest mu mausoleum too up there, you know, mm -hmm. the exit section M too. But he's we have a, we have a, another sign out there for him. Thank you. <coughs> 
as we were just talking about, my man. I have a personal, he was my, my grandpa's <coughs> childhood friend and longtime friend. I've had dinner with General Chase. I was allowed to call him Mr. Chase, but uh, that's all I got to call him. I didn't call him Levi, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> For as, 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 as you attest, Mary Lou, not the biggest man, but he was a firm man. <laughs> uh, he, he was a tough. Well, you look through that, as I said, you know, decorated veteran, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War. You know, he's, 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 the, he's the biggest, he's the greatest double ace yeah. pretty much ever, ever. And uh, County Airport bears, bears his name. He's, he's, he, he's, up in, he's up in Section 5 with us. Um, but I have a funny story with him. I went to have dinner with him and his wife when they, they had a nice little place out in, in, Sherbert, in Sherbert, New York. Being a general, being a general, he had service. Like the people come out and serve us with the silver and all that <laughs> stuff. He know my grandpa and him liked they liked KFC, and I I, I would try I, I couldn't laugh at this. That, at that table, you if you were spoken to, you spoke back, and then they lift off the silver, and then there'd be KFC. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I knew what it was. I, 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 I knew what it was, but yeah, but I couldn't really gloat over the fact laughter over the fact. But, uh, he, he's, he's an admirable man. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he, he's impressive, uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. So that's neat. You want to go visit him, Section 5, and he's got, he's got a sign. We'll get, he's going to get that. Mary, you're going to Thank you. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and, and again, for some of you that are interested, and, and I forget half, half, half of these, but you can Google, like, Wikipedia and, and that. But... What I, what I enjoy, a lot of people do, the artwork is just fascinating. Mm -hmm. And the types of monuments and the symbolism that go on with these monuments. Thank you. Like pointing up to heaven, just, uh, just oh, the yeah. obvious ones. Mm -hmm. strong, as, strong as an oak, but there's another similarity, but usually they're sideways on that one. Yeah. Um, the urn, sorry, I should be up on that. Weeping willows, that's obvious. Orchids, usually affiliated. These, these yeah. bother me. Yep. Yeah, they do. That means an infant. Uh -huh. And that, um, that's sort of cool. Like they left their boots mm -hmm. um, there. That's an old, I think, Scottish tradition, too, but leaving their shoes oh. at the grave okay. also. Another thing, too, a lot of people don't realize, too, we have our obelisk, you know, mm -hmm. our tall monuments. You know, a lot of them are, you know, the taller, the more showing off and stuff. But I don't know if any of you have ever seen the ones that look like they're broken right <coughs> off. That means you, they died abruptly. Mm. Then and then the, you have a sharp sharp slice, and that means they die too young. So there's just different things. But the mm. ones that got killed like in accidents and stuff, they, they, they're like snapped like that, and people wow. don't realize that. Thank snake. you. You have the uh, woodman of the world. That's where we're going. Is that mm. is that a woodman's too? Woodman of the yeah, world. Yeah, I got one on the next here too. Mm. Well, there's the woodman's. Yes, all those law and. I'm still baffled. That, that's probably the tightest lip society in, in the world. But the you see a lot of them. You got, well, the Freemasons are also, yeah. but the woodsmen are. Oh, really? If you go in the cemetery and you see the logs laying there. Uh huh. There are quite a few, yeah. That's the woodman's society. Oh, wow. And I didn't realize that one that was verticals like that, too. I, I didn't realize that one big sandstone one is. All sizes. Most of them came limestone out of Indiana. Okay. But, uh, you pay dues. Uh, for a monument, you paid all your life, and once you died, they placed the stone oh, oh, wow. in some sort. Yeah, there's one. There's one right up by Grover's, though. Have you ever seen that one? I, that's a giant. That's a sandstone one. That that one right there. Uh, uh, no, there there isn't any sandstone. Well, see, I, I think that there's was there's strong there's as an oak. I think that's the symbolism of their monument when they made that. Um, I don't think he's a wood. I don't think he was a woodman society. But there's some just some neat stuff that people mm -hmm. have had made. I've seen that with lumber people, guys who cut wood and stuff like that too. They do some mm -hmm. stuff too. But, uh, but just just different things with the rings. You can you can Google a lot of these things. But if you ever go through, you can find it. You know, right on your phone. So international international order of odd fellows too. That's, yeah. Yeah. I have a quick question. Yes. What's the order of the Redmen all about? There. Anybody know? Just a fraternal order. Yeah, order just a fraternal station. order. Just a fraternal order. Native American. A lot of them are mysterious. A lot of them are just, they're so mysterious. <laughs> like I said, this is the tightest one. The people are, you can't, if you Google it or anything like that, try to research it, they're, they're, they, people are baffled on that one. Do they still exist? Uh, 
Woodmen? Oh, no. Do they still <laughs> exist? I'm sorry. Do they still exist? The Woodmen? No. No. I don't. Not, not to my not knowledge. That we know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. And who knows? You know what I mean? They're not talking. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Again, we're right about done there, too. But if you have any questions, be free that. Again, we have an incredible website. Again, our records and maps. Very, we have PDFs. We have satellite images of our cemetery on that mm -hmm. also. Again, I have a big map in front of my office with the cemeterial maps in it. Really nice website. Jan contributes to, to that also. Mm -hmm. And information, mm -hmm. Wikipedia with us too. But we try to promote ourselves with dignity in that. And um, so check that out too. A lot of people don't realize we have that our resources also too. Thank you. And check out our new video too. I didn't realize we had this. So thanks for, mm -hmm. I didn't get, I, I was probably going to learn this at the board meeting tonight. So, <coughs> so at least I guess we have a you know, remember the deceased. Oh, I know what he's talking about. Yes, too. We're at our new campaign, our new campaign for our newsletter too. So, just you know, anybody that ever wants to help in that, we're always like I said, we are now we're Robin Peter to pay Paul, but we aren't as gloom, doom and gloom as what we were. But however, however though, um, you know, we 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 do need the money. I mean, we're just getting. Killed with workman's comp, the state just jumped us 25 percent. I don't know. So I, I just don't understand. So and and just to maintain to maintain basically a municipality too. And you know my workers are incredible. They're overworked, underpaid, mm -hmm. and underrated. But if you guys go visit, you, your your jaws will drop to really to see the elbow grease too. Mm -hmm. Quick thing with my poster over here, just to let you know because. I've had this in my family. From this is from the, my, the Briggs family. I'm from Briggs from Homer, and that my grandpa Walt had this in his pool room. But the the, the, the Corlin history. But the, I got going through the list, and I got thinking. Half half of those are my residents too. <laughs> so so for those players that are on there that I have in the cemetery, J.R. Shermerhorn, James, section W. He died in 1919. A.M. Shermerhorn, Abram. Section W, uh, 64, he died in 1929. James, James Milne, mm -hmm. James Milne, Professor Milne, Principal, Coralton New School. His library in Oneonta State is named after him. Uh, he was related, he married James Sh Shermerhorn's daughter. Henry Freer, Section D1, 1923 he passed. B.B. Mm -hmm. Jones, Benton. Jones Vault, 1896. So yeah, they weren't running around at 90 years old in that poster too. So that's why when we were doing research, FC Straight, would it be Straight? Straight, straight. straight shows. That's what I was wondering though. S-T-R-A-A-T, but that's what I was wondering too. Right. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I was wondering that, 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 I was thinking that too. Francis, section W14, 1920. The Shermerhorn's plot is that's my favorite. Uh -huh. probably my goddess is that. That's probably my the girls, the the ladies. I'm, I gotta call them the ladies. <laughs> um, are <laughs> beautiful in the cemetery. We have some really really neat goddesses and, and that. It's it's really really neat. Uh, B. F. Taylor, Benjamin Taylor, probably Taylor family. Old, this old family. Mm -hmm. Section M. Ten. Are they right over near you guys? That's pretty close. Nineteen fifteen. C.B. Hitchcock, Caleb, Section T, eight, 1918, he passed. He's right behind Hitchcock's, or right behind the Sanders Ball. When you first write, when you walk mm -hmm. on our cemetery. T.H. Theodore Wickwire, Wickwire Mausoleum, 1926. Mm -hmm. A.W. Albert Edgecombe, Section J, 19, 1913, and my re my relation through a marriage on my mother's side. Joseph Eggleston, who is the reporter, section H2, 1924. Thanks, folks. I appreciate you having me. If you have any questions, too. But we really enjoy doing these things, and I appreciate you letting me give us a feel. Yeah. Bob Morris just happens to be a personal friend of mine, and I think some of these people might know Bob and Shirley here in Cortland. Happy birthday. Uh, yeah. He was probably the gentleman who was instrumental in having them be able to obtain a piece of machinery that will dig, plow. He listened move. to me. 
which yeah. is great. Instead of repairing old machinery, uh -huh. he was able to bring a brand new piece of machinery and then slice it. I almost didn't get this job because I got sarcastic. No. Because when I, you know, <laughs> when I, when I walked, oh, I'm pleasant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, walked, I walked out in their garage after running Virgil, and I laughed. Oh, yeah. Virgil, quarter the size. I turned around, I turned around to John Herschel, and I said, I have ten times better equipment than what you got. I go, is this all you got? Mm -hmm. I said to him, he goes, yeah, that's all we got. And I said, I don't know. Yeah. Then my only other shock is that the second day, but I always said, I went up to my, my, my grandmother's just a cremation grave <coughs> to inter her uh, about 10, 12 years ago. And we went up that hill and the grass was up to my knees yeah. and the hole was in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. Nobody around. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to take care of this someday. I didn't even have the cemetery bug at that point. Mm -hmm. But then I came back to Virgil, and after working at prep school and stuff, and, and Stanbro's maternal side are there, the Revolutionary War soldiers. Frank, who's in Smith Corona, that's my fifth great, my fifth great grandfather. His son and his two wives are the third row of Virgil. So, so that's how I got that. But I finally had the opportunity. I heard it was nuts. You don't want to go to it, but I figured, well, I'll give it a try. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. So I got the job. The second day I drove up with Kathy Sincata and I got looking at the conditions and I said, what? And they were better then than they were 10 years before that. And I said, what <laughs> have I gotten myself? Woodchucks just. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Well, wow. you couldn't even enjoy the beauty because there was a piece of garbage or a coffee cup or can. Yeah, I mean, literally. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll just say, uh, and just, just people, my, yeah. the workers at that time. Oh. Sorry. Oh just, yeah. just disrespect. Yeah, well, right. they, well, they drive by it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's not the philosophy. Well, Our philosophy is you, you treat this with dignity and respect. This is somebody you treat it like it's your own. Right. If you see it, pick it up. That's, a, that's mm -hmm. what we, we say. And if you do that, the next time, and then, you know. <coughs> and that's why now, as I yell at him, when I do catch him for not picking stuff up, sorry, I don't yell at my employees. <laughs> but but when, I, when, I, when, I, when I criticize them, <laughs> the place looks so good now, when you do leave something like that, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So just keep up, keep it up, you know, keep it up. And I'm proud they do, they do an excellent job mm -hmm. of that, yeah, too. Yeah, it's much better. And the board has been doing good. And like I said, kudos to Kathy Sincata being the first president of the board. She definitely deserved it. Um, she kept my sanity there and, and that too, so I appreciate her She's doing that. Person. Also, uh, but I think we're going to keep on going. But boy, come over and enjoy the, check it out, especially now when we still got a few leaves left and mm -hmm. that. Because if you haven't really been there and drove, drove around, it, it's, it's a funny thing because I get the people, especially men, I'm sorry, that I'll have a service. And it, this, it could be way back up by the college. They're out of town, and somebody will pull up. And I go, I'm here for the so-and-so service. I'll, here, I'll drive you up. Oh, I can find it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll wait in my office for about 10, 15 minutes, and usually I'll wait for the, that car if they make it down the hill. Mm -hmm. Creep down the hill, and they walk up sheepishly. Oh, I can't find it. <laughs> it, is, it is immense. Mm -hmm. It is immense, but immense with beauty. Yes. With beauty and fascination. Literally, there's people that take... That take Two, two days, three days to go through it. A lot of people do the, the cemetery in sections of four. I've had people, uh, I've had multiple families homeschool too mm -hmm. with our cemetery too. Yeah. And again, the college students come in too, you know, twice a year also. So we, we, we have that going on also. So thanks, I'm getting Gabby, can I answer? It's okay. I, I just want to make a comment. My home backyard goes up to the rural cemetery. And this whole notion of, um, Putting, breathing life into it is, is really something true that I've experienced. I live on Sand Street. I've had people who are leaders in this town look me in the eye and say, oh, Sand Street, it's dead. It's all done. Which, as a community developer, that makes, talk about making the hair on the back of your neck stand up. But just your steadfast presence in my opinion, and this is my woo-woo-y side, has uplifted the spirit completely around there. And the whole notion of right. taking stewardship over your place, you're leading in ways that people may not even be conscious of. Thanks. Um, There's a lot of emotional and physical, physical work in it, mm -hmm. but 
the main thing, this is probably my philosophy too, with a, with a cemetery being successful, you have to, you have to beautifully maintain it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. There was honestly, I'm not going to say any names, there was the old management years ago that thought if you let it run down, people are going to help you out. So that, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't yeah, work yeah. like that. It doesn't work like that. So beautifully maintaining your presence, have different selling options that we have now, like our niches and that. Some I do really didn't talk, but they have like because cremations are variable. We have muzzle lambs. You got to have sellable options. It, it, it is it is a business. Um, you, you you have to be you have to be compassionate, but you got to have a little ingenuity because you're going to see these rural cemeteries. Will will it's I think folded. Scott I don't Scott is in dire dire conditions, but basically and basically. They've just done the black hole thing, just burying people, mm -hmm. try to maintain, not try to do anything a little bit different. And now their maintenance is going down. Their their the, the attitudes of the people are, and, and that too. And again, to be a cemetery worker, it is the pay is it's, like I said, it's it's it, it's it's a it's a it's an incredible amount of dedication. I have to be on duty six days a week. That's New York State yeah. law. You have to be on duty six days a week. <clears throat> So, and like this summer, I, it was six days a week, a lot of people sure. during the summer, <laughs> yes. And I have to, like, Jew, I'm sorry, man, I, I, and like, like the Jewish, we usually close the hill, but if I have a Jewish uh, service, I have to, we have to put them in, in the snow, so, sorry, man. That's, I was going to ask, that was one of my questions, do, do we maintain the Jewish cemetery? We, yes. We, yes, yes, we do. They uh, always have the gate closed, but I always you can go in. We're working. Yeah, you can go in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's just the design of it. Yeah, yeah. you can go yeah. in. You're, you're welcome to go, you know, go in there. I, I it's have a beautiful tell you, spot. I love the cemetery, and when I go there, um, I I have uh, people that go in on the right hand side, and then I have some way back up on the hill, and then I have some over here. And all family, and then lots of folks that I know. <coughs> I never go in or out that I can see a worker that I don't say thank you for your work. We appreciate it. You know what? When I first they, see, they like that. that they please, like to please, somebody notice. Please, just that little bit of praise. Doesn't hurt to no, say thank you. No, helps those guys because they got abused for, for years, and then we deserve it in a way. I said. Hostile the day after Memorial Day, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff people would say. Oh God, yeah. And stuff, yeah. but I buffered it. To, I, I handled it all. And that I don't think I've had a complaint. You aren't going to make everybody all happy. I'm only grieving people. <coughs> but all we get, I get letters thanking us now, which you never, you never yeah, used to get. Yeah, right. And that. you know, when I when I was on the board, I um, I went to um groups of like the veterans groups uh, to see if they would put flags out. They I can't get any help. Well, yeah, but they lost, they, they lost their funding for flags. Mike Dexter and I. They lost their funding for the flags. So this was 10, you know, 10 years oh, yeah, ago. Yeah. And I, well, they didn't want to go up there no, because, no. because they didn't, the, the flags were getting no. destroyed. Mike bought a new flag for the pole mm -hmm. and he fixed the rope on it. And he and I worked for two or three days putting out as many as we could. You know, that's what's neat about that cemetery, and I think what's helped me that I have such an old, especially old business family, and I'm, I'm old enough too where I, I used to listen, and I had a lot of old historians around me, and the Briggs's, we, we, we knew a lot of people, but if you're from Cortland, most probably you have somebody in my cemetery. Mm -hmm. that, that's, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you know how many are, buried, are, are dead there, right? <laughs> over 19,000. But we, we are 85%. We are 85%. You got to have a little cemetery humor, you know, now that's so, you know. We're the last people in life to, we're the last people in life to let, to let you down. Yes. So, so hope I didn't let you down too much today. Great. So. Very nice.